Every town has its legends. Every village has its myth. A dog with blood red eyes, hands that grow from the ground, and goblins that hide in mines. Those growing up in Exmoor had the beast, an escaped big cat roaming these very woods. This urban legend turned real when a hundred sheep were slaughtered in a matter of months. The carcasses were torn apart, shredded and ripped, suggesting they'd be killed by something bigger than a normal moorland predator. The wave of animal killings in the 1980s still presents the greatest evidence of a moorland monster today. Throw injuries unseen in England before led many people to jump to conclusions. And it wasn't long before the Marines were called in after a number of big cat sightings were reported. However, after several attempts to capture these failed, the Marines class the story as nothing more than just a simple rumour. But locals dismiss claims that the beast didn't exist and it soon led to national interest. With many people asking the question, could a puma, leopard or panther really be roaming wild in the North Devon moorland? Size of a Labrador, maybe a little bit bigger. Very lithe and smooth looking in its movement with a long looping tail. It was black, pointed ears, uh, scraggly, didn't smell too good. It had a large head, a long loopy tail and it was huge. The existence of big cats in the British countryside has been an ongoing debate for decades. The most popular theory of how such animals have managed to populate the southwest moors dates back to the 1960s. In the late 60s and early 70s, wealthy Brits would keep big cats as pets. They were a symbol of wealth and represented power in local communities. But that all changed in 1976. The Dangerous Wild Animals Act of 1976 made it illegal to keep untamed pets. Whilst most people opted to either sell their animals to local zoos or kill them for their fur, some experts have suggested that this led to owners of exotic cats, such as pumas or lynx, simply releasing their animals into the countryside. However, what was for a long time only a suggestion by experts could now well be the haunting truth. In light of the escaped lynx from Dartmoor Zoo back in July 2016, stories of three pumas being set loose on Dartmoor by famous circus owner Mary Chipperfield have surfaced. Mary Chipperfield was a 1970s British circus entertainer and animal trainer, providing numerous animals for various BBC productions and the 1967 movie Doctor Doolittle. Mary came from a family of animal-orientated people, with her father the proud founder of Southampton Zoo, which sadly closed in 1985, and her mother an animal trainer herself. As well as an animal trainer, Mary and her husband Richard Corley were actively involved in the creation of Longley Safari Park, after her father began to develop drive through zoos in the 60s. However, Mary Chipperfield's animal perfect life came to a devastating end in 1978 after a Plymouth Zoo was forced to shut down. All of her animals were supposedly relocated to nearby zoos. However, it is now thought Miss Chipperfield released her favourite breeding pair of pumas and another male into the wild, rather than see them go into a new home. The current owner of Dartmoor Zoo, Benjamin Mee, claimed that animal disappearances aren't unheard of and that the lynx that escaped that was later safely returned was somewhat unfortunate, but far from a first. A jaguar escaped its enclosure at a zoo in New Orleans, killing six animals before it was finally caught. A lion escaped a locked enclosure at a North Carolina park, killing a 22-year-old intern. The city's zoo was also flooded, so wolves, bears, big cats, tigers, and even this hippopotamus escaped. Me, when questioned about the transfers of pumas to Dartmoor Zoo, said he had no knowledge of the circumstances and how it happened, but did admit that at the time there were three pumas that should have been here at Dartmoor Zoo that were not. 
The founder of the British Big Cat Society, Danny Bampin, has been cataloguing sightings of big cats for a quarter of a century. And in a recent interview with The Telegraph, he admitted he had never heard of before information about the missing pumas that never arrived to Dartmoor Zoo. His source, he said, was the zoo's owner at the time of the incident, Ellis Dorr. Bamping admitted that Mr. Dorr told him that there were only two pumas in the consignment, but five tags in the cage. Mary Chipperfield told Ellis she had broken down on Dartmoor and that somehow three pumas had escaped. We think she let them out onto the moors. However, Bamping did say that if this was the case, Chipperfield wouldn't even have been obliged to report it, because releasing exotic species wasn't even illegal until 1981. He did insist, though, that the pumas could have easily survived on the wilds of the moors and might even have roamed to Exmoor. So, could the missing pumas really be the beast of Exmoor? Or would it be impossible for a big cat like that to survive that long? I asked co-owner of Exmoor Zoo and big cat specialist Daniel Reynolds for his views. A long in the distant past, both myself and the curator here have actually bumped into a large cat out in the wild around us, otherwise we probably wouldn't in the wild. We just treat it as a different legend, which is um, how most people view this. Myself personally, I've only ever bumped into a puma outside uh, with two other zookeepers as we travelled out of the zoo within about 200 metres of leaving the exit back in 94. We've never seen another one in the wild here or around about since but we regularly have reports here at the zoo. Um, the most recent one was back in uh, June. Uh, that was from the uh, Devon and Cornwall Constabulary Police who requested me half past 11 at night to go down and actually check physically whether my black leopards were within the enclosure because they had three separate reports from different people spread over an um, 18 hour period from the um, Broughton and Morton area uh, up here on the coastline. We have had um, reports and we have liaised with the um, Devon and Cornwall Constabulary Wildlife Liaison Officer um, over repeated um, sheep uh, disappearances. Uh, there was one only last year where 13 went over two and a half weeks on a more or less a nightly um, disappearance. They took uh, cameras from here, they went and investigated. There was quite a lot of evidence to support that it was a cat because um, uh, a sheep uh, which had been mauled had been um, addressed by the vet and put in an outbuilding. The animal was missing from the outbuilding and it had been taken through an eight-foot window where all the blood smith and everything took it back out again. Not only are they out there, yeah, um, not only can they survive really without taking domestic livestock they don't need to, uh, but they're breeding as well. It would be a lie to say no animal had ever escaped from the zoo, but the more dangerous the animal is, the better and the more precautions for public safety you have to take. Uh, I've been running it here since 93. Uh, we have had some rodents escape, we've had some parrots escape, we've had a monkey or two escape. Uh, right back in the distant past when we first started out. Recently, nothing really dangerous has escaped uh, for some considerable time. However, zoos today by law are required to practice um, effectively um, containing any wild escapes. Here we have a lethal weapons holders. Um, there's two of us on the rifle, there's three of us on the dark gun, and there's five of us here on a shotgun. So it's going to be unlikely that if anything escapes effectively that it's actually going to uh, get into the countryside. And everybody tends to forget. Pre-75, you could have bought anything, and it's one of my favourite little quirks, you could have bought anything from a gutter to a draft on the livestock section in the exchange of mine, and it wasn't illegal. It wasn't until the government realised that people were actually taking young tigers and lions out into the public domain and not having full control of them or anything, or they've just got them on the lead, that they realised how dangerous, potentially, the ownership of these animals was actually was, and that's when the licensing law for enclosing them and registering them with the authority began, and I think that's the point in time we're really referring to as far as the escape beast and everything is concerned. If I walked into the puma enclosure and made a mistake, 
Um, they'd probably sit there and look at me and say, why? Why are you in here? And give me those few seconds needed to get out and reverse the procedure that I've just done. If I did the same with the leopards, they're much more um, of a different character. There is every chance that uh, the female will try and kill me and take me down. The male would want to play with me, he's Henry. Uh, and he's probably the most dangerous animal we have on site because he's so happy to be around people. They are wild animals per se, used to living in our environment. And they don't come in contact with people. They treat us with the fear that the wild animal does. Um, most of the sightings, virtually all the sightings, are from cars. They don't view the car as a potential uh, dangerous threat. And that's exactly the same in the wild. I mean, you can go out around all the game reserves in Africa in a car yeah, or a vehicle, and you'll be able to view them within 10 or 15 minutes. The moment you step out or open the door, everything to the horizon disappears. Yeah, and it, I'm sure it's the same scenario here. We universally agree that the Bodmin beast is the x beast. So, with so many sightings, but such little evidence to prove that the beast does exist, the legend remains a mystery.